Good morning. Welcome to Carson Valley United Methodist Church. As always, it is a great day to worship our Lord. A few announcements today is before we begin our worship. As always, let me introduce myself. I'm Tony Hafner. I'm blessed to be the pastor here, and I am so glad that you are with us today. Uh, the yellow cards that you may have received uh, with your bulletin, those are for attendance, and that's really important if you're a guest today because it gives me a way to get back in touch with you and let you know that I'm glad that you're here. The, the uh, white cards, uh, they are on the back of the pew in front of you, and they're also located at the offering baskets, I believe. There might still be some there. Uh, the offering baskets are located on the, on the exits on the way out. And that's where you can put those yellow cards, the ba offering basket on the way out. The white cards are for sharing prayer requests or praises. If you have a prayer request or a praise that you'd like me to read from that card a little bit later on in the worship service, please fill that out now. And then after a little bit, we'll have a, our birthday bank time. And it's a, uh, it's a time when people are coming up to share their celebrations, and that'll be a great time to just come on up and give me that white card at that time. Let's see. Uh, and Lynn, I'll, I'll let you know, this, this will come off the, uh, the sermon time. The sermon's going to be uh, shorter today. So uh, uh, I will have to, to I want, but I want to let you know that, that uh, gosh, you know, the, the uh, COVID stuff has, the COVID uh, rates, I guess, I get tired of hearing that word, have, uh, have increased uh, dramatically. And, and, you know, our church does a good job. Uh, so far, no one has caught COVID here at the church. And as far as we know, well, no one's brought COVID here to the church. But uh, we do have our mask. Uh, we're following the governor's mask mandate. And I appreciate all of you wearing your masks. Uh, we have taken advantage of a precedent set by our annual conference that allows us to, uh, uh, to, to be unmasked in the, in the chancel area as long as we're like 12 feet away from the rest of the congregation. So thank you for allowing me that. Um, Let's see, but, but uh, we're going to have to do better on our... Yeah, everybody does, has done this faithfully during worship. We're going to have to do better uh, during the week in our, uh, our ministry meetings. And I've got to admit, I'm one of the worst offenders. If you come in during the week, I'm, I'm probably not wearing a mask. I'm going to do better with that because, because as, uh, as things just keep getting worse and worse, we're going to have to uh, uh, do our best at, uh, at wearing our mask. That is the number one... Uh, preventive measure that, that can be done. We're going to have to do better at that and do, as, do the very best we can because if you remember about Thanksgiving time last year, there was a huge spike in, uh, in cases in our county, and we shut down voluntarily at that time and didn't open again until February. Um, yeah, interestingly enough, right now we're at a level about where that spike was when we shut down last November uh, Thanksgiving time. Uh, so if there is another spike at Thanksgiving time added on top of this very high level we have now, I can expect that we will have to be shutting down again. So we don't want that to happen. Let's do our very best to, uh, to, to keep that from happening. And, and, and wearing our masks, our masks is, is about the only thing we can do. The other thing that we can do, though, it's just as important, is stay home if you feel sick. And I know that, that uh, it could easily be a cold, it could easily be allergies, but uh, let's err on the side of caution. If it is allergies or if it is a cold, you'll be fine the next day or in a couple of days and come on back then. But uh, let's err on the side of caution. If you feel sick, stay home. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, yeah, I was going to say, uh, I'm going to take advantage of that every chance I get, but uh, <laughs> uh, Lynn is up there just waiting to, to let me know that. All right. I think that's all the announcements that I have. Let's begin our worship service today with our opening hymn. And uh, Lynn, what's our opening hymn? God bless America. Oh, okay, cool. God bless America. Is that and, uh, it? Christy, we're not going to do a uh, key change, correct? No, we are. We are doing a key change. Okay, thank you, Lynn. So, I guess we know the words, right? Okay, the, the words are up here. Okay, great. 
stand as you feel comfortable. Lord, we have hope in you. A lot of things have changed, and I wish we could make it all new again. I wish we could blow the dust off the streets, but we can't. But God can. He restores my soul, wrote the shepherd. He doesn't reform, he restores. He doesn't camouflage the old, he restores the new. The master builder will pull all the original plan and restore it. He will restore the vigor. He will restore the energy. He will restore the hope. He will restore the soul. And there's a prayer that I wanted to read. <clears throat> From Lamentations 3. The Lord's love never ends. His mercies never stop. They are new every morning. Lord, your loyalty is great. I say to myself, the Lord is mine, so I hope in him. The Lord is good to those who hope in him, to those who seek him. Amen. All right. It's time now for our children's message. I invite you to be seated as you, as you uh, come to this time of... Uh, Miss Nancy is not here, so I, I guess, Trinity, you can kind of stay where you're at uh, and enjoy Nancy from the big screen. We have, uh, we, you may recognize Doofy. Uh, he is uh, Goofy's cousin, and uh, Nancy has brought Doofy with her once again. So without further ado, uh, grab the kids, gather them around the screen, those of you who are watching on uh, YouTube, and here is Nancy and Doofy. Yeah, this is our friend Doofy. Yep, I'm, I'm not Goofy, that's my cousin. We are a little Goofy. <laughs> hey, I got a, I got a, uh, I got a knock knock joke. You start it. Okay, <laughs> knock knock. Who's there? Um, <laughs> that's the joke. <laughs> Gets people every time. <laughs> Put my leg up here. There, now I'm comfy. Yeah, but you know, that knocking reminds me of something I was reading in the Bible just the other day. In the book of Revelation, it was talking about Jesus knocking at the door. And, and now, and, and, and how you're supposed to let him in? Now, now, he's not talking about, you know, like the door to your house. No, no, no. He's talking about your heart. And, and, and he said, if you hear his voice and, and invite him in, He'll come and eat with you, and, and well, 
he's not talking about coming in and eating some beanie weenies with you. No, he's, he's talking about, about, well, I think it means that he comes in, if you invite him, and he's with you every day, and he knows what you need. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yep, yep. And, and speaking of eating, that reminds me of the next, another thing I read a little earlier in Revelation where he talks about um, not being lukewarm because lukewarm is what you want to spit out. I mean, just imagine if you had like a nice, beautiful glass of milk sitting in front of you and, and what you think is it's going to be nice and ice cold. Oh, and you take a mouthful and ew, yuck, it's lukewarm. That's not good. But no. But you know, Doofy, I kind of like lukewarm coffee. I mean, that's kind of my favorite. What? Well, you know, if you like hot coffee, it's only the right temperature for just a little while, and then it's lukewarm. And if you like cold coffee, it goes the same way, back to lukewarm. So I figure, why not just start out with it lukewarm, and, and then it's always nice and comfortable. Well, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. Jesus doesn't want us to be comfortable just sitting around being the same all nice and comfy that's lukewarm nope Jesus, that's not what Jesus did you ever you ever read about him sitting around being nice and comfy well no I, I'm Jesus was always out teaching and preaching and healing the sick and and hanging out with you know people nobody else liked that's right that's what I'm saying so if you're gonna follow Jesus you can't just stay the same sitting around being comfortable. Don't be lukewarm. Okay, let's pray. Loving God, we want you in our hearts. We want to follow Jesus. Give us the courage to not be lukewarm. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. See y'all. Do Doofy is one of our favorites. Uh, he always has a great joke to start out with, too. Uh, now it's time now for our birthday bank. It's a great way to celebrate special events in our lives with a, a small donation that goes into our birthday bank itself, and that goes into a separate fund in the church, and we use that fund to support uh, children's programs and projects around the world and in our community. What, uh, what celebrations do we have today? But okay. I'm celebrating. I got my car back. You got your car back, and it's fixed. Yay. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to have quarters. You'll take a quarter there. We have quarters in case you don't have one. All right. Well, there's a celebration. All right. 26 years. All right. Happy, happy anniversary. <clears throat> Celebrating our two daughters being here. All right, that is a celebration. Thank you for coming, and and I understand you arrived just a long time along with the uh, the good weather. Yeah. And so, yeah, as I said, good company brings good weather. That's right. Uh, in remembrance of my dad, his birthday was the 16th of this month. All right, your dad's in memory. Your dad's birthday. Thanks, Tamara. <laughs> okay. Uh, it is time now for oh. It is time now for the giving of our tithes and our gifts to the Lord, our, our offering, if you will. And again, we don't pass the basket like we did. Uh, gosh, it's been almost. Uh, it's been well over a year and a half now. Uh, we have we stick with the basket uh, at the exits, and uh, as I. Okay, yeah. I say every once in a while, yeah, it's kind of dangerous to put the, uh, the uh, b offering at the end of the service uh, uh, after they've heard the sermon. It's, uh, it's kind of risky. But uh, we do that nowadays, and it's worked out great. Thank you for your faithful stewardship. And remember, remember to put your, uh, your yellow cards in there as well on your way out. Um, thank you for your, your faithful stewardship. But with that, our uh, chancel choir has our offertory today.
Thank you, Lord, for such talent and such gifts from you. We enjoy you so much, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for the fruitfulness, fruitfulness and the abundance of our land and the marvelous blessings of our lives. May we use these gifts wisely with care for the natural world and for the benefit of others. There we go. Okay. We have a, a few uh, prayers and a few praises as well that have been given to me. First, I'd like to... Uh, remind you that what I will do is read the prayers and after I've read those we will join our voices together in a congregational response we'll join our voices together saying Lord hear our prayers after I have uh, read the praises we'll likewise join our voices together this time saying we thank you Lord as we come into this time of prayer Christy please help us quiet our hearts and minds Rebecca Holt lists up prayers for um, her new roommate. I believe that's Lynette. Is that correct? Okay, thanks, Rebecca. Uh, Lynette is looking for a place to live and grieving the one-year anniversary of her son committing suicide. I'll be in prayer for Lynette. Uh, she's also taking care of her mom who has dementia, praying for comfort and peace for Lynette. Uh, Martha lifts up um, Cheryl Barrera. She's on a ventilator with COVID. Uh, the prices lift up Tim Swain, a friend of Don, one of Butch and Loanne's daughters. Uh, Tim is in the hospital with COVID as well. Uh, Nancy Lampson, prayers for Jim Goodlow, who's battling leukemia. Um, prays for glue, blue skies and clear air. Barb Graham, uh, prayers for continued healthy pregnancy for her daughter Robin and uh, baby boy due January 24th. All right, congratulations to Barb. Yeah. Uh, Sue Baumrock lifts up uh, her sister Amy, who is sick with COVID as well. Pray. And then a couple I received over the internet. Uh, Pam Roeder uh, needs our prayers. She has a broken shoulder, so be in prayer for, for Pam, uh, for relief of pain and healing and comfort. This is from Allison Gray, prayers for Roger. His, soldier, sh his shoulder surgery uh, was a lot more complicated than what was pre expected, and uh, he needs prayers for healing. Uh, from Vicki Kenneman. Prayers for their son-in-law, Caesar, and the rest of the family of his best friend whose father passed suddenly. Okay, these are our prayers. Let's lift them up to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. 
We have just a few praises as well. Uh, from Barb Graham, praise for daughter Jill Fisher uh, and Steve McGee getting married last week. Yay, how about that? And in praise for a new path of retirement after 44 years as a physical therapist. Yeah, that's from Barb as well. Uh, Lynn Frew lifts up a praise, praise for beautiful weather and fresh air. Yay. Yeah. And then uh, Jan Pullman lifts up a praise. I'd like to thank all the wonderful people uh, from this church who brought meals to Bob and I as I recuperate from surgery. Uh, the surprise people who just stopped by and dropped off food, you are terrific. Cards and calls were appreciated. And thanks to Sue Baumrock for checking with me as to our needs. Uh, these are our praises. Let's lift them up to the Lord. We thank you, Lord. Uh, amen. I'm going to pause for just a bit more uh, silent prayer as we lift up our unspoken prayer concerns and praises to the Lord. Mighty God, we thank you that in your love and mercy and grace for us, you indeed hear our prayers. Amen. Well, I invite you to say the Lord's Prayer with me. We're reciting the Lord's Prayer this month instead of singing it. So uh, I invite you to stand with me. We become one when we stand. Uh, become one with me as a congregation as we say the prayer which Christ taught his disciples to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated once again.
Wow, that was a way to kick it off. Man, <laughs> that was great. The reading today is from the Acts 4, 23 to 31. Please stand if you're able for the gospel. After they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priest and the elders had said to them. When they had heard, heard it, they raised their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and everything in them. It is you who, who said by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant. Why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples imagine vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers have gathered to get together against the Lord and against his Messiah. For in this city, in fact, both Herod, Pontius, Pilate, with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel gathered together against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look at their threats and grant to your servants to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. When they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. The word of God for the people of God. Please be seated once again. All right. Today's uh, scripture is from the book of Acts, and it, it relates what is, is going on in the earliest church, that first community of disciples that, that uh, had professed their faith in Jesus. Now, it, it, this occurs in the book of Acts right after uh, a pretty significant event. Uh, it's, Pentecost, of course, has happened. Uh, Peter preaches his famous... Uh, Pentecost sermon from the rooftop, uh, 3,000 people are, are saved that day and, 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 and are baptized, and, and then they begin to uh, live together as a community of Christians. Now, uh, chapter 3 in the book of Acts begins with, with Peter and John going through the courts of the temple. They, they, uh, they see a, a man who has been uh, lame from birth. He, he has not been able to work, uh, not be able to work. He's obviously been begging, but he's not been able to walk uh, since he was born. And he's begging for money. And, and uh, Peter and John look at him and say, you know, silver or gold, I do not have. But what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. And uh, the Bible says that the man literally, literally leapt up and began to walk and shout and praise God. Well, this caused quite a commotion, as you might expect. And uh, the, the, the priests and the, uh, the, the rabbis, uh, all the, the, uh, everybody, the Pharisees, everybody got together, and they basically arrested uh, Peter and, and John after they had uh, uh, said that, that Jesus is the one who did this. The name of Jesus uh, is the way that this happened. Uh, they said, you know, they were, they said, you shouldn't be, we forbid you to preach or to heal in the name of this Jesus anymore. They would have actually probably done something much more severe to Peter and John, but the scriptures tell us that they were afraid of the crowd. Uh, the crowd was, was very much in favor of Peter and John and this, this uh, Jesus. And as a matter of fact, it tells us that it, 
that another, I think it says another 5,000 people believed in that, in that moment because of this miraculous healing. Uh, Peter and John returned to their church that is gathered there uh, in, it doesn't tell us where, but they're gathered together in a, a, probably a hiding place uh, to, to tell them what happened. And when they tell them what happened, there's a, a, a tremendous fear that sets into the church. And they pray this prayer. They call upon the Lord. You know, and, and, and it's significant that they call upon the Lord. They ask, for, they ask for boldness, and they ask for God to be involved. Yeah. Uh, I chose this scripture to preach upon as we, uh, as we have just encountered our, our 20th year anniversary of 9-11. I thought, well, this is too big of a date to go by w without uh, preaching a, something about it. And, and I had planned to uh, 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 launch into all these different things that we could recall about that day, you know, kind of put us back in that place. But I'm going to tell you, man, after this past weekend, I don't want any more of the remembering stuff, okay? I mean, it's important. We don't want to forget, okay? But, but uh, it's also another thing to relive it. It's one thing to remember it. It's another thing to relive it. And I feel like... Like, especially after 20 years, uh, it's a pretty significant deal, you know, and, and the, the war that, that followed has ended now, and so it's, it's like this appropriate time to really get into it. Uh, but I'm going to say that I feel like I've relived it again, and, and I want to kind of turn away from that and, and get back to something about uh, 2,000 years earlier uh, and, and see, see if we can't put ourselves in that, in that position. Uh, the... The early church found itself calling upon the Lord just like we did. That's one thing that, that it might be appropriate to relive, you know, calling upon the Lord. Uh, it, the, the, all of us experienced it in some way. And as the last weekend has, has shown us, we can be brought back to that place we were, riveted against our TVs or doing different things as we helped our communities. Uh, we can be brought back to that, but, but have we been brought back to that moment when we were calling upon the Lord? Uh, we gathered together and we prayed. You know, the noon time that day, let's go, let's go back to that time. That, that, did anybody else, I know the church that I was serving, we had like a special prayer time at lunchtime. People, people came from all over the community to the church at, at lunchtime and we prayed throughout lunch. And that evening, we had a special prayer service that evening, and we prayed again. And that Sunday, man, the church was packed. It was, <clears throat> it was a time of gathering and praying, a time, a time when we realized that we needed each other, and we needed God. And so we came to the place where we knew that we would find one another, and that is the church, our places of worship. Uh, synagogues, mosques, wherever it might have been. We came to those places and we called upon the Lord. We prayed, yeah. We, we were in solidarity in that moment with, with the early church as, as they first realized that, that this is not going to be easy, that this, we're going to find ourselves persecuted, we're going to find ourselves, ourselves in trouble because of this Jesus. And they called upon the Lord they call for two things. They call for boldness. And I love this. They called for God to be involved. Okay, so, so grant your servants to speak your word with all boldness. So, so they, they prayed for courage. Isn't that kind of where we were that day? We were praying for courage because, quite frankly, we were somewhat frightened. And they also, then they called for God to be involved. Grant your servants to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal. And signs and wonders are done through the name of your servant, Jesus. Yeah. Heal. Heal. And signs and wonders. They called upon God to do these things. And we, we gathered and we prayed. We prayed for courage. And I believe we, we received courage in that time. Uh, we, we prayed that God be involved. 
Let God be involved. In that early church prayer time, the, the book of Acts tells us that, that the, 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 the building where they were praying was shaken. The foundations were shaken. And, and, and I believe that in our country, as we gathered together, we sought each other out and we called upon God. We, we, we knew that we were stronger in community. We, we felt safer. We, we felt like we were one. And we called upon the God. And I believe that, that the foundations were shaken as well. I can think of three things that, that, that changed that day. Okay, number one, firemen and policemen were no longer considered servants. Okay, they were considered heroes. And that has persisted to this day. That's a, that, that's, that's a, a big change in our culture. Number two... People who joined the military were no longer seen as fools, but they were seen as faithful. Yeah. And that has persisted to this day. And let me tell you, that was a seismic shift in our cultural awareness, the way that we thought of things. Now, some of us may be young enough that we don't remember that there was a certain stigma associated with being in the military in the Vietnam era. And that stigma kind of persisted all the way up until 2001. And then, and then, you know, when people, when high school kids joined the military, they were praised, they were held up as examples of, of the faithful. Yeah. That, and like I said, that was a, a tremendous shift in the way that we viewed service in the military. I'll say that... that then another seismic shift occurred. We became united. You know, we aren't too much different now than we were, you know, back in those days. You know, our country doesn't, uh, doesn't change dramatically super fast. If you think we weren't divided back before that time and all of a sudden we came together, you're, you're mistaken. Today we're divided, but I believe that, that, that God still shakes the foundations. I believe that... Is yours going crazy? Okay. Mine's going crazy. All right. Uh, I believe that God still does shake the foundations. I believe that here in this, here in this place we are gathered together. What might it take for God to shake the foundations? I... I believe that what the book of Acts tells us is that when God's people come together out of a sense of a need for each other and, and a desire for God to be involved and to help out and, and to cause miracles to happen, uh, I believe that God shakes the foundations and that things happen. I believe that God is still moving mountains. I believe that that God is still raising the dead. I believe that God is still slaying giants. I believe that God is still shaking the foundations. When we come together and we pray, oh, that we might be together in prayer. Let, let us pray. Mighty God, we come to you today and And so many things are, are pressing upon us. So many things threaten the past that we have known and cherish. So many things are uncertain as we go into the future. Lord, we are a divided nation as we come today. And we call on you to shake us up. We call on you to, to convict us where we are wrong about the firm and solid beliefs that we hold and treasure so dear and condemn the other side for. We pray that you would shake us up. Shake our foundations. That, that the scales might fall off of our eyes. That, that the falsehoods that we have claimed as truth fall away and that that you become our foundation once again. Shake the false foundations that, 
that surround our culture today. Remind us of what is real. And fill us with your love so that we might love our neighbors. And change the world. Shake us up, mighty gods. We call out to you. Give us boldness, mighty God, Lord Jesus. Stretch out your hand to heal and to work mighty wonders. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. This is our prayer. Amen. Amen. We have a very appropriate hymn today as our closing hymn. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Anybody, anybody remember that? Well, we haven't sang that in quite a while, but gosh, you know, as, as we come to this time of, of our worship, when we have, we've prayed for, for God to, to give us boldness and to stretch out God's hand, uh, let, us, uh, let us remember that it is Christ we lean on. Indeed, I invite you to stand as you feel comfortable. We become one as we stand. Become one with me together as we sing this wonderful prayer to Jesus. Please, please be seated once again. We do have just a few reminders today, and Lynn is going to help me out with the reminders. Um, I can go ahead and launch into him while he's coming down. Uh, flowers today are in celebration of Tony and Sharon Aiello's 64th anniversary. All right, yeah. As Martha would say, that's a long time to be married. All right. Yes, yes it is. All right, let's see. Flower set, also in celebration of Richard and Tamara Brewer's 40th anniversary. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, our Bible study picks back up again t t uh, tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. in the education room here in the church. Uh, please come for that. You don't, it's, a, it's a great study. Just pick up. You don't have to have been uh, to all, all the previous ones. Just come on in to our Bible study. We're studying the, the, the Psalms. And we have a great uh, study guide by Max Licato. Our trustees meeting is this Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. And let's see, our member care meeting is this Wednesday at 5.30. And our United Methodist Women's Holiday Craft Team, uh, they're beginning tomorrow uh, to meet every Monday, uh, getting ready for our uh, United Methodist Women's Craft Fair. Uh, please come and join us. For that. It's a lot, of, a lot of fun to craft if you enjoy crafting. You don't have to have a craft with you. Just come on up and they'll put you to work. Yeah. All right. Our chili cook-off is next Sunday, the 19th. Uh, come and fill up on chili. Yeah. And then uh, after a couple of days you've recovered from that, you'll be able to golf 
on the 22nd. Uh, if you'd like to do that, be sure and sign up. Uh, are we, are, is it too late to sign up now? Are we, are we done with the sign-ups? Okay, good. Uh, it, there is still time to sign up if you'd like to, to participate in the, uh, the golf tournament. And uh, the sign-up sheet is on the easel out right up by the front uh, out of the lobby there. Okay. Let's see. Uh, oh, Deborah Blackman has... Uh, the library group has uh, donated some picnic tables for the dog park area. And if you'd like to have... They're about to be varnished or... Uh, uh, polyurethane, yeah. Uh, and so if you'd like to have a Bible verse uh, of your favorite of yours placed underneath the urethane on that tabletop, uh, be sure and uh, uh, call or text or uh, email that uh, email address you see there at the bottom of the slide that says goldenmom5 at frontier.com. Okay. Harvest of Thanksgiving is next Sunday. So uh, bring your non-perishable food items. Uh, we'll place them here at the altar, and uh, we will be delivering those to the food closet later on that week. All right. And this is where Lynn's going to take over. So every year as football season starts... <laughs> what? Now, you probably need, because our viewers... Do uh, you think the, those, those oh, are getting... Okay, all right. You can it, hear me, right? If yes. you if you can't if you're watching from home and can't hear Lynn, be sure to call the office and complain vehemently. <laughs> it is stewardship season, and this is something we do just once a year. Uh, this is a way for the church to figure out how we might be able to serve the community next year. Yes, it does include turning the lights on, keeping the lights on, but it, it talks about how we can support our community as well. So, we, this year's theme is Traveling the Road to Generosity. And we already have one uh, picture up there already because what you do is you have an estimate of giving card, okay? And we ask you to consider what you might give to the church next year. And uh, as those cards come back, you can select a classic car or classic truck. If you recall, we did this about four years ago. It was much fun. If you circle that little picture, then that picture will have your name on the bottom of it or gift to God if you wish to be uh, remain anonymous. And we place it on the wall. And the first picture on the wall is from Al Bomrock, and it's his dream car, his 59 El Camino. Because not only can you pick one of these, you can give me your own picture of your own favorite car. Rumor has it Kathy Wicker's going to hand in a Model A. A key? A? A. Anyway, so again, uh, this is the way that God's church can figure how we might serve best next year. So uh, prayerfully consider what your gift might be to church next year. Again, this is called an estimate of giving cards. So if something changed during the year, you know, if there's a decrease in income or an increase in income, you may change your estimate at any time. So I'm going to be standing at the back and, uh, and just prayerfully be handing these out to you. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Okay. Well, I believe it's time for our benediction. Let's, uh, I, I encourage you to stand while we receive our benediction, you know. And uh, it's, it's not a, a benediction is, is a blessing. And uh, as blessings go, uh, we receive them looking, looking up, uh, looking toward God to receive this wonderful blessing. May the love of God the Father the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever as we go in peace. Amen. Amen.